today we're going to be talking about sword and shield is it still investable is that where you should be putting your money now we're going to run down a few scenarios and just give some different perspectives talk about some different entry points and just kind of should you be going back to sword and shield or should you be putting your money into scarlet and violet as you guys can see here starting off the bat we're just going to talk about evolving skies real quick we're going to we're going to move through these boxes but with the uh, context of we are mainly looking at booster boxes because those are traditionally the best investment, so we're not going to be talking about specialty sets right now. So with Evolving Skies, so this is a, this is a great question and it's just kind of fun to talk about, get different perspectives, right? With Especially with Evolving Skies, people uh, ask a lot, should I buy Evolving Skies now? And the answer that I'm going to give in my opinion is that I think, for the most part, all of Sword and Shield is going to be good long-term investments, and I think these boxes will appreciate. But you have to consider, we'll talk about, we'll use the example of just doubling your money, because that's a good goal to have, right? Now, if you had bought these, uh, you know, Evolving Skies boxes, or however many, at $100, which there was a point when they were readily available at $100, or sub 100 and you would already have over six times six x your money, right? But if you want, if you're gonna buy now at you know six sixty seven hundred bucks a box, uh, I'm just gonna use the number seven hundred just because it's a little easier. Because you know after taxes and stuff, you're probably gonna be around that number anyways. But if you were to buy an evolving skies box and pay seven hundred right now, it would have to go to fourteen hundred for you to double your money. Now. I think that Evolving Skies will, at some point, surpass a 1,000. I think, obviously, it's pretty goaded at this point, so it only kind of has room to go as more people open boxes and stuff. But the question that you need to start asking yourselves when you start looking at this, as far as doubling your money, is Evolving Skies more likely to go to 1,400? Or is a Scarlet and Violet set, um, if, if you can get that entry point of 100 or under, is there a Scarlet and Violet set that can go to 200, right? I think that a lot of the times with what Scarlet and Violet era is doing, your money might be better put towards that because I think it's a little bit more feasible for some of those boxes to get to that point. Now we're gonna we're gonna run through all the scenarios. So, Evolving Skies, uh, like I said, it's only it's only gonna run, right? We've seen what Team Up can do. It's it's gonna get there. It's just, we just don't know how long it's going to take. So, Evolving Skies is a great investment. It's just maybe not the best, if that makes sense. I do think it's one of the safest that you can make. But also, look at some other uh, Sword and Shield stuff here, like Lost Origin 213. So, your entry point always is a factor, because if you're, especially if you're just looking to double your money, which I think most people are probably looking to do better than doubling but with lost origin you got to look at it like right now if you were looking to get into lost origin which i think is a strong set i think this is going to end up personally the second best set from the sword and shield um era price wise i just think the the set's good enough in the giratina can carry it personally but if you were to get this at 200 a box to double your money you'd have to get to 400 now there's a a future where I see that happening, but how long is it going to take for Lost Origin to hit 400 a box? That's kind of what you have to ask yourself. Same th same thing. Is Lost Origin going to go to 400 before Paldea goes to 200? But once again, that did you get into Paldea at 100? Because you know you see what I'm saying there. So your entry point is crucial. So you know I think. I think that it's a lot more feasible for comparing Lost Origin to Evolving. It's a lot more feasible, I think, for Lost Origin to hit 400 before Evolving Skies hits 1400, if that makes sense. So you see what I'm saying here? Um, not that evol like Evolving, probably the safest you can make, safest investment you can make, safety-wise. It's gonna just keep going. But when you start to look at it from that perspective, like. I think Lost Origin more immediately will have more room to run. Same thing if you look at what we'll look at Fusion Strike real quick. 
Fusion Strike is a little bit more expensive, uh, 225 pretty much. So, you know, you're going to have to get that up to 450. But it's the same thing. I think Fusion Strike is a lot more likely to get to 450 than Evolving Skies would be to get to 1400. It just makes a little bit more sense um, in my mind. But once, you know, like once Evolving Skies cracks 1000, I think a lot of the other Sword and Shield sets are going to kind of follow. So that'll be interesting to watch. Same thing with Chilling Rain. It's in that same category. Um, probably, I rank this a little less, like after Lost Origin and Fusion, in my opinion. Still, same thing. Sword and Shield, most of these boxes that I'm going to pull up, I still think all are worth investing in. It's just how long are they going to take to get to your point. Um, and entry point is always, always crucial. So, Chilling Rain, 200 a box, same thing. Chilling Rain, probably a lot more likely to hit 400 before Evolving hits 1400. But could we see Twilight or Paldea Evolved hit 200 before Chilling Rain hits 400? So this is a game you have to play, right? And it also depends, are you, are you wanting to get into these positions? You have to think about your exit points. Like how much money are you wanting to make off these boxes because... What you guys need to understand is there can be a very cyclical um, aspect here. Say you, say you got, we'll use Evolving as an example again. If you if you got Evolving Skies at 100 a box and it ran up and you 6x your money, you take that money, you would want to sell those boxes and then put those into newer boxes. So either other Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet because it's a lot easier for those to 2x, 3x, 4x than the more expensive boxes. So you can kind of rinse and repeat um, as that goes. So, but you know, you gotta keep in mind, it is important to to keep in mind, like with evolving, um, I, I wouldn't personally be selling evolving right now to do that just because I th that's sort of the outlier uh, set. And if those can hit team up numbers, you're gonna wanna hold for that. So it's, it's a very, uh, it can be a very touchy subject, but that's kind of why I just wanted to make this video and kind of just touch on all the different perspectives, right? I think it's important to look at. Next up, we'll take a look at uh, Brilliant Stars. We'll ask the same question. What's it going to take for Brilliant Stars if you're getting in at this current price point at 180? What's it going to take for this box to hit 360? Now, this one, I think, is a little more or less likely to hit 360 than some of the other ones maybe even hitting in those 400 range just because the set's just not quite as good although i do love the charizard from the set i've been very vocal about that i think that that card is extremely undervalued i know there's a lot of them out there but it's the best charizard artwork we've ever got i stand by that so yeah and this and this one 360 for a box I think that might take a while for Brilliant, personally. So that's when I start to look at it like that, too. If I'm going Sword and Shield, I'm pretty much going, honestly, Lost Origin and Fusion Strike. That's where I would lean. But just for transparency, so you guys understand, currently, I am the most, the set that I am the most invested in of any set is Lost Origin. That's the set I believe in and believe has the most upside. So that's what I'm saying. I see Lost Origin hitting, getting into those 400s being very possible and not taking too terribly long to get there. So that's kind of what I look at. Um, not that I don't have, like I have Brilliant Stars as well, but not as much just, just because currently, and once again, it, it all depends on your price point. You know, if you got, if you bought these boxes at 100 or 80 or whatever, if you got it at 80, you've already doubled. See what I'm saying? So, uh, price point's always relevant, but we'll take another look at Silver Tempest here. Now this set, you can get this on the Pokemon Center currently. I do think weaker set for Sword and Shield, but the Lugia Chase, I do believe in the Lugia Chase and that it can carry this set. People will want to chase that card. And sometimes all the set needs is one good chase. And the Lugia, that's an epic card. But, so you can pick this up right now on Pokemon Center for 140 which means to double, you'd have to get two to 280. And that seems that actually seems fairly doable. 
if that's more of your price, if that's your entry point, you know, that 140 mark, 280 seems seems doable. Once again, not as much as some of the other sets. I, I think the other ones will get there quicker, but I, I see that totally possible in the future, just how long. If you look at now a set like Battle Styles, kind of regarded as a weaker set, but introduced alt arts, so... And I do think it's a little bit underrated, just Urshifu, not as popular of a Pokemon, but Battle Styles is, I don't, I don't think it's horrible. This is one where if you're getting in right now, this is one, so if you got in at 100 or sub 100, I could see this, you know, climbing to 200 and that could be doable. But if you're getting in, in now at 130, I think it's going to take a long time for this box to hit 260. So this is kind of one I would avoid. Now, we'll get into some interesting counterpoints here. So we've talked about all these sets, if you're looking to invest. Um, now we'll go into Scarlet and Violet. So this is, where, this is where it gets interesting. So Paradox, I've talked about Paradox, I've been vocal about it before. It's an underrated set, huge. There's tons of great IRs. It's a big set, IRs, SIRs. I think it's kind of loaded, honestly, and it's underrated. So I classify it as a sleeper set. Now, at one, we'll just call this a hundred. You can, you don't have to get this on TCG Player. You can find this for a hundred bucks. And not that long ago, you could have been getting this in the '80s. So with this set, if you picked it up in the '80s, like I did, it only has to get to 160 to double. 160 is MSRP. So right also what's going to happen that with scarlet and violet that we just saw recently um happen with the sword and shield era is once these start getting close to msrp and then they start selling out on the pokemon center then that's when they start to move so this box price currently you know it's a little bit lower it's not creeping up on that msrp price yet but some of the other sets are. And once they go out of stock on the Pokemon Center, it's kind of like a feeding frenzy. And everyone that's when everyone starts to notice. Once these boxes uh, reach, they get close to that price point, that's when things start to get crazy. So uh, while Paradox Rift has a, a ways to go, when I look at this set and we start to get this, the first Scarlet and Violet sets that start to sell out, Paradox, if it... If your entry point was 80, it really seems like a no-brainer. But even at 100, I can see this box, you know, reaching $200 and you'd be doubling your money. And I, that seems very doable to me, keeping in mind that this is an underrated set. We'll take a look at some a little bit stronger sets right now. So Twilight. Twilight's been crazy. Absolutely crazy. The Greninja, right? I don't need to really explain it to you guys. But what's very interesting with Twilight. This is where things start to get a little bit more picky. If you're looking to invest right now, Twilight and Paldea from Scarlet and Violet are looking like the best sets as far as dollar-wise. So you could pick these boxes up right now for 130 and you ask yourself that same question. What's it going to take for this box to hit 260? It's been the most popular box. It's selling like crazy once this starts to creep up to that 160 and that pokemon center thing happens uh i could see this i could see this catapulting into the 200s but i think it's gonna take it's gonna take a bit to hit that 260 mark and with some of the newer sets that are coming out like surging sparks i think it's gonna take away uh from twilight so you kind of ask like same thing Will Twilight hit 260, if you want to compare it to Paradox, before Paradox hits 200? Those are the questions that you have to ask. Um, and it can be very tough. That's why a lot of people, when it comes to booster box investing, and I've kind of adopted this a little bit more myself, they just do more blind investing. They're just getting every set. And that's kind of the approach I've taken. Because, And also, when you buy every set at or below $100, you're always going to do well. There's never been boxes that you know, have performed badly given enough time. There's always exceptions. Like currently Scarlet and Violet's not doing very good. And we'll, 
we'll get to that in a second but also not that much time has really passed since the scarlet violet base came out next we'll take a look at paldea which is kind of in that twilight realm you see the median price at 150 so if these boxes start getting to that price it's going to be crazy but also too you have to think about we really haven't gotten reprints for scarlet and violet yet i do think that they're coming and we saw like we saw small like a scarlet violet base reprint that happened a while ago and you know the base set's not really super popular anyways but will will this get reprinted reprinted or is the pokemon center or pokemon company excuse me gonna just let it ride that that's something that you also have to consider so um doubling would be 270 paldea hitting 270 when you look at it now it does it does sound kind of crazy because that's like lost origin and fusion aren't even at those prices but honestly it does seem it does seem doable i just that's the thing this is where it starts to get a little bit harder with the more successful scarlet and violet sets once you start getting into that price range it's very hard it's very hard to know nobody nobody can tell you for certain uh, so if anyone out there is saying for certain they're lying but um and you can tell i'm i'm kind of hesitating a little bit at, when i'm at this point because this is just where it starts to get more difficult um i do think that i do think that it is very likely that once these crack into that 200 range um that they're gonna move it just depends it depends on the print run if scarlet and violet ends up being less printed than sword and shield because maybe they pokemon company looks at it and they go well we kind of overprinted sword and shield maybe we'll print a little less on scarlet and violet with some exceptions maybe um you know so that you kind of have to factor that in um i think we'll know a lot more after this holiday season because that's usually when we get the reprints so um yeah it's a little it's a little tough to know then you have the new set stellar crown which some people like some people don't um I, i'm pretty stoked about it but if you're getting this you can get this for under 100 right now currently but we'll call it 100 if you're picking this set up for 100 you got to ask what's it going to take to get to 200 to double your money you know um can it go can it go to 200 before fusion goes to two, 450 i think that's very possible you just Fusion could be in the 300s, you know, for a while. If once it cracks that point, it just, with all the attention shifting to Scarlet and Violet, some's going away from Sword and Shield, which it's going to, it's going to um, limit the growth, right? So then you have like, and I got a point I'm going to come back to, but then you have Scarlet and Violet base which is at 92 bucks you could probably pick this up in the 80s so then it's only got to get to 160 180 depending on your price point um that seems doable to double uh, but this did get a reprint so i'd probably be avoiding this set if i'm being completely honest but at the end of the day the question was is sword and shield still investable and the answer in my opinion, is absolutely, absolutely still investable. There's, there's so much more room on these boxes, and what's going to happen, for the most part, is, and I've used this analogy before. I think it's a great analogy. I, th I kind of think of the Pokemon card market as a carousel, and it's spinning around, right? And if you've ever watched somebody on a carousel, your kid or somebody, right? You watch them. And then they come and they're out of view and you can't see them anymore. Oh, they come back into view. And right now what's happening is the market is shifting away from Sword and Shield into Scarlet and Violet because it's hot, it's new, it's fresh, right? Twilight changed that. Twilight set the precedent that these boxes can move quickly. And it's kind of crazy, honestly. So what's going to happen and what will be extremely interesting to me is, like I said, the Pokemon Center pricing the MSRP, once we start getting close to that and we get that first set that sells out on the Pokemon Center, maybe it's Twilight, right? Say it cracks, once it cracks that 160 range, 
it's going to be pretty quick to go up to around 200. But what's going to happen, this is where it starts to get very interesting. When you're looking at Scarlet and Violet sets at or near 200, and then you pull over to Lost Origin or Fusion Strike, if they haven't moved a lot, then the market goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield is undervalued. Then all the money jumps around because Sword and Shield on the carousel came back around. You see what I'm saying? So right now, the, the, those are things that you just should try and understand. I like the carousel analogy. There's probably better ones out there. But at the end of the day, Sword and Shield is extremely investable still. I think I think like Lost Origin. So evolving, I can see cracking a thousand, and it might take a long time to get you know from a thousand to maybe even two. But Team Up did it. Evolving Skies is crazy. It's definitely possible. I can see Lost Origin and Fusion Strike creeping up into the three and fours. That seems very doable to me. Uh, with Lost Origin, I think taking the lead. And a lot of sets, a lot of sets being able to move into those price ranges as more boxes are opened, right? It's time years go by. So I think that Sword and Shield is still extremely investable, but maybe Scarlet and Violet might be the better immediate play. If you can make money off of that Scarlet and Violet while it's hot right now, and then once it leaves your view, and then jump back into Sword and Shield. Just, just, just my opinion. And the market works in crazy ways, so we don't know. But with like surging, surging sparks is getting huge hype. We haven't even seen the set, and people are like freaking out. So uh, I'm still holding some reservation for surging sparks. Uh, I kind of want to see all the cards first, personally. But I think it has amazing potential. And then we have the EV set and the Team Rocket set. A lot of people are saving their money, saving, waiting for these sets, saying, I'm skipping Stellar. I'm skipping, some people sip, skipping Surging. They just want Team Rocket or the EV set or um, the other, like a trainer specific set. We don't know if it's going to be Jim or what. But so, um, yeah, we got a lot of money in the market that's waiting. It's waiting for these sets. So, um, yeah, I think, I think I got my point across. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm kind of a little bit going off the rails here. Oh my gosh, if you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, 22 minutes in, obviously you enjoyed the content. Do me a huge favor, go down below and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave me a comment. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my take on Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet. And also, if you're interested in staying up to date on uh, when like 151 booster bundles are back in stock or when there's great deals to be had, um, there is a link to my discord we just we're hitting some good growth lately um so yeah d we're sharing deals in there people are picking up boxes left and right so the discord's been super fun but that is going to do it for this one guys i will catch you in the next one and remember it was never a phase